Welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm Mike Friesan. With us for our program today, Assemblyman Steve McLaughlin. Steve McLaughlin represents the 107th Assembly District in New York State. The 107th District includes Rensselaer, Columbia, and Washington counties. We thank you folks all throughout the Greater Capital District region for joining us for our program today. Assemblyman, nice to see you. Nice to be here. A lot going on here at the State Capitol right now. Very, very busy. I mean, you've got a budget crunch that's mm -hmm. underway just a few weeks before the legislature needs to have a budget in place for the fiscal year that begins on April 1st. You got that going on. Uh, you got an attempt to change the rules of the Assembly. We'll talk about that in just a little minute. Uh, but uh, let's start with about I don't know, 5,000 or so of your best friends showing up on the Capitol lawn to say, uh, you folks got to pay attention to us. I think it was 10,000, really. It was a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people. And it, I mean, the, the estimates are, have been kind of in a, a big window. We'll show you folks, though, some pictures of the people that were here. You can send us your, uh, your estimates on how big you think the crowd was. Well, these are people that were upset by that gun bill. Yeah, they were very angry, peaceful people. They were, uh, they've had enough, they're fed up, and they let their voices be heard. There's not a, a blade of grass left on that lawn out there, which is, it was an incredible show. A friend of mine drives a bus part-time for Wade Tours, and he got called out to drive a trip from the Remington plant. They sent four buses. He counted the buses. There was 129 of them lined up nose to tail, mm. looked like a freight train. And he figured that they hold 64 people, all of them were full, but even if you just say that's 50 people per bus, that alone is 6,400 people on those buses, plus the locals and all the people that drove in on, in their cars. I think there was 10,000 people there easily. After being at the first rally in January where there was about 4,000, it was uh, it was impressive to see that amount of people. One of the things that's significant to me is that that gun bill now, it passed in the, in the early days of this legislative session, so it's like a month and a half ago mm -hmm. now. It's not dying away. I think it's gaining strength, the opposition. People are, are really mad, and the more they know about it, it's the exact opposite of what the governor says. He says the more they know about it, the more they'll like it. No, the more they know about it, the less they like it, and the more vocal they become. And as we sit here today, we have 33 or 30, I think it's 34 counties now, have officially stood up and opposed this, and there'll be another one tonight. And uh, before long, we're gonna be at 50 counties out of 62 that have stood up and opposed this plus multiple sheriffs, multiple sheriffs associations, uh, the counties are standing up, individual towns are standing up. This is like nothing I've ever seen before because the people understand that their rights were infringed and the process by which it was done. Not only is the, the bill a nightmare, but the process by which this was done was a complete disgrace to democracy. I think they're figuring out that this bill does nothing along the lines of what we had heard its intent was, which was to prevent things like the shootings in Newtown, Connecticut from happening. They've, they're start, and I guess that speaks to what you were saying early on in this process, that why did it get rushed through so quickly? Because now that there's been some discussion, now that there's been some analysis of what this bill really does, yeah. people are starting to figure out what was the point? Now, it's window dressing. It doesn't do anything except for infringe on the rights of the law-abiding citizen. Now, there's a couple of parts of the bill that you could say, we we're okay with that, that stuff that we push for, increased penalties. We push for, and it's interesting that the, the majority was pushing back, by the way, against in e increased penalties for illegal handgun use. Overwhelmingly, that's where the problem lies, is illegal handguns. It's not the law-abiding citizens in my district or anyone else's district throughout this state that are the problem. It's the criminal element that's the problem, and they're not going to pay attention to this law just like they don't pay attention to every other gun law we have. It is interesting to see the dynamic of the gun control advocates uh, to say, you know, they seem to ignore the fact that the criminals have ignored every single other law we have out there re related to gun control. They're going to ignore this one just the same. So my approach to this is this needs to be repealed. There's no amendments that are going to satisfy me, and we need to start over and have the conversation that we should have had before this was rammed down the throats of New Yorkers. All right, let's show the folks now with a little bit about what that crowd looked like. We'll start you off with some comments that Steve McLaughlin made to the group, and then we'll be back with more of today's assembly calendar. We know what went on here. We, uh, we understand what happened. This bill was passed under cover of darkness in a cowardly move. It was passed through the legislature, the Senate, and the Assembly by a governor who wanted to be president but now never will. And there are now 33 counties in the state of New York that have stood up and opposed this tyranny. Let me hear you. Three 
out of 62 and we'll be at 50 before long i can guarantee that and for those that those counties that won't stand up trust me the voters are going to speak in the next election we're back now uh, with Assemblyman Steve McLaughlin on the set, and there's some of the crowd shots that we're looking at there. And uh, yeah, I mean, th I guess they were conservative estimates, those five th estimates of 5,000 people, yeah. uh, because th that, as you said, that was a full Capitol Park, and unfortunately, that combination of a full crowd and uh, some rain, that lawn is just a it's disaster gone. right that now. That lawn is gone. <laughs> but you know, it's a beautiful thing. The grass will regrow, and then we're going to trample it down again at the next rally. But, you know, but the grass can keep getting replanted, uh, but this bill needs to be repealed. Uh, so it was, an, it was just an incredible turnout to see that people are engaged and uh, wide awake, and they are not going to take this any longer. They've had enough. Does not the legislature in Albany need to respond to those 33 counties that have spoken out against this legislation? You, you estimate it's going to be up to 50 anyway. Yeah. Uh, does not Albany need to listen to the local governments in this case? I certainly think that they, without question, should be listening. Whether the downstate group that sort of dominates the, the assembly will listen or not remains to be seen. But what's disrespectful is what we get uh, from the administration where they say, well, it's just a vocal minority. 33 counties out of 62, that's not a vocal minority. That's a, getting to be a strong majority. Now, granted, we're upstate New York. We don't have the same population level that NASA and Suffolk and Manhattan and Westchester do. But shouldn't the rights of the minority, if in fact we're the minority, which we're not, but even if we were, shouldn't we be respected? Shouldn't we be listened to and, and have a voice at the table? So it's interesting that they pick and choose where the minority counts, apparently. But uh, this, is, uh, this is not ending. The opposition grows stronger by the day. And it's, uh, it's heartwarming to see that Americans are waking up and starting to push back against their government, which was clearly overreaching in this case. This was heavy-handed, it was arrogant, and it did not need to be done this way. We had heard there would be so-called chapter amendments, changes to the legislation to take a bad bill and try to make it better, but we haven't seen much about that yet. I guess some kind of change having to do with Hollywood. Yeah, uh, the, uh, you can't even, I mean, fathom the hypocrisy of that. We're going to come out of the blocks. The governor comes out with his first proposed amendment to this bill, and you can't get more hypocritical than trying to amend the bill for the very industry that glorifies violence. It is, it's unconscionable that that would be your first thought to try to fix this nightmare of a bill. Who cares about some pinheads in Hollywood? I certainly don't care. My people don't care that I represent. The people in New York don't care about that. Why are we taking care of an industry that uses fake guns to begin with? So why do they even need an amendment? There's nothing in the bill preventing them from using fake guns. They're also, as I said to one of the reporters, I said, well, nobody needs 10 fake bullets to kill a deer, apparently. I mean, this is just unbelievable. And you would talk about out of touch. That's out of touch, to come out with that as an amendment to this bill. It just strikes me as unbelievable. But not so much when you see that there's huge fundraisers held for the governor out in Hollywood to the tune of 12500 per plate at a dinner. So how interesting that those are the people that he wants to take care of first. Let's take care of the people in New York and let's fix this bill by getting rid of it and having a solid conversation about what we can do. And that means, yes, keeping guns out of the hands of criminals and the mentally ill. We need crime control, not gun control. But it doesn't mean limiting their ability to defend themselves. You know, this 10 round, this seven round limit is a, is a disgrace. It wipes out a whole bunch of handguns that don't have uh, 10 round or seven round magazines. So there's so many things that could have been done correctly here. This was just a huge missed opportunity. And the courts are involved here too, right? I mean, there's questions about the constitutionality of this law. Absolutely right. And I think that uh, I think we have a great shot. When people ask me if it's going to be repealed, I don't think it'll be repealed in the legislature. But I think the courts are going to uh, take a hard look at this, and I think it may be overturned in the courts. And I certainly hope it is. The same day that that rally was taking place, you and your colleagues in the assembly were trying to change the in-house rules by which the assembly works that allow such things, I guess, as motions to discharge or um, messages of necessity, rather, from, um, from the governor's office to try to speed that kind of legislation through the process. Sure. Uh, tell us a little bit about the rules changes and, and what kinds of things you hope to accomplish. Well, we had four or five different rules changes that my colleagues and I introduced, and they were all solid rule changes. The one that I was working on would have stopped the clock, if you will, at midnight. We think that's a sensible approach to this, to not legislate beyond midnight, unless it's truly an emergency, you know, fiscal or natural disaster or, God forbid, terrorist type thing. Thing. Uh, we'll go all night if we have to. But to just throw things on the table 
uh, of the legislature in the middle of the night and expect them to vote while the people of New York are sound asleep and not having a chance to weigh in on things, that needs to come to a close. That needs to stop. We think it was a common sense measure, but uh, well, you know, the, the majority being, you know, being their mindset, they just shot this down. I don't know why you would stand opposed to putting a little sunshine into the process. That almost happened with the gun legislation. You, you got that first draft of that bill at like 10 o'clock at night or something like before, that. The first time I saw it was 11 at night. And it was almost expected that the vote and the debate was going to be happening mm -hmm. uh, just minutes away. Let's uh, go to the floor of the assembly and listen to what Steve McLaughlin had to say on that particular rule change. We'll come back for more assembly calendar. In 2004, the Brennan Center for Justice rated New York, uh, the New York State Legislature, as the most dysfunctional in the nation. Here in 2013, the Assembly uh, is a much different body. We've restricted lobbyist access to the area behind the chamber. Uh, we've overhauled the Rules Committee and we've enacted the Public Integrity, Integrity Reform Act of 2011. We listened to those voters and we delivered real reforms that New Yorkers deserve. But the job of, of fixing Albany is not finished and a lot of work remains. So today, I propose another good government reform designed to make New York State a more accountable and responsive part of state government. I'm sorry, make the New York State Assembly a more accountable and responsive part. This amendment to Section 2 of Rule 2 would increase the number of members needed to override the rules controlling the, quote, hours in session from a simple majority to a two-thirds of members elected to the assembly. The people's work should be done in the light of day, not in the middle of the night, as it should be done. In the middle of the day is exactly when we need to be acting. Uh, good government watchdogs and taxpayers have spoken loud and clear. All night sessions do not, do not serve the constituents of this great state. Uh, and quite honestly, it's not very healthy for the rest of us to be up all night either. Uh, late night sessions reduce openness, transparency, and accountability, accountability, and they're a glaring impediment to citizen oversight of this legislature. Our job as legislators is to represent our constituents here in Albany. Keeping the rules as they are means far too many New Yorkers are being left in the dark, and we've seen it over and over again the past couple of sessions. The bottom line, their votes are not being counted and their, votes, their voices are not being heard. And today, we have a chance to show real leadership and build upon our previous successes. So by joining me in voting for this resolution, we will honor the voices of all the voters, strengthen the legislative process, and take back the people's house. And thank you, Mr. Speaker. This really kind of amounts to some inside baseball, mm -hmm. but it's the reality of the situation. It's been done and done and done again, where bills come out late at night, and uh, it, you just kind of feel beaten down. I mean, it's just human nature. You're tired. Maybe you don't want to be debating this anymore because you want to get to dinner, to bed, whatever the case may be. Yeah. And uh, yet it's, it, it's happened. Yeah, and it happens it's, a lot. Uh, you're right. It's inside baseball. The, the public would never really know, you know, except for when they wake up and see these great changes that have taken place or not so great changes that have taken place in the state. So it's inside baseball, but it's for the people, it's the right thing to do. Structurally, it's the right thing to do. The legislators will do whatever we need to do to get the job done, but it's not the right way to legislate this state. The people deserve to have their voices heard. They deserve to see what's going on. That's sunshine. That's open government. That's what we were promised, that we we're going to have the most transparent government ever. Uh, and this isn't really the governor's fault. This is the legislature's fault for allowing this to continue. It has to change. Now, why would, why would anybody stand up and oppose that type right. of legislation? But they did. So I think it's very interesting that that's where the majority is on this, that they're perfectly willing to keep ramming this stuff through in the middle of the night. And, and you know, the thing about the gun bill was that there were supposed to be three days for a bill to be on a member's desk for consideration. That way you get to read it, you get to live it, understand it, mm -hmm. the public gets it, the press gets it. That didn't happen with the gun bill. That was another one of those things. We'll just put it through as fast as we can and we'll talk about it later. Yeah, exactly. And that's why you're seeing the reaction that you're seeing all throughout the state. People are standing up saying enough's enough. Steve McLaughlin, thanks for joining us today. We want to thank you folks too for spending your time with us. We'll hope to see you again soon for our next edition of Assembly Calendar.